welcome back. Another day, another vlog. We're back. Back at work. Not much sleep, but we're back. Uh, it's going to be a big week. We've got a lot of things happening this week, so stay tuned. If you haven't already subscribed, smash that, hit the bell, all the usual fun stuff in YouTube. Makes you feel part of the team, doesn't it? I hope so. Um, <laughs> uh, if you haven't remembered, it's a new week. You might have forgotten from last week. Last week we had our 500th show for another day, another vlog. Um, if you go over to that video, leave a comment, you're going to the draw to win that print. So if you haven't watched that video, go, what's that? You'll know what the hell I'm talking about <laughs> today. But uh, we've got some reviews coming out this week. I've got to shoot some reviews for some gear that I've got. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. Some some lighting, some audio, looking pretty good. Some good stuff there, so pretty excited about that. Back in the room, back in at the office where I live, uh, I guess, most of my life, or at least a quarter of a life I've spent in this room and another room on site. So yeah, back here, business as usual as that. It was a long day yesterday. Three hour drive, five hour flight, sleep, Stay at the airport, wait, stay up until the next flight, then another hour and a half, then come to work for 12. Big, big day. Sort of getting used to it. It's good. Good news is my climate sleeping bag that I bought. I said that last week I bought that just specifically for that to keep me warm through winter. While I'm waiting for my second plane to get to site. Brilliant. That's the best thing I ever did. I'm so glad I bought it. Uh, nice and cozy in that while I was waiting on the chair. So that was. Very, very good. Good idea. Uh, good preparation, I think. That first one, I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? But I think I should be right now. I've got a bit of a plan in place. Luggage situation worked out well, so that little system worked out. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I think I've sort of got there. So, yeah, working out. Going really well. So, very cool. Now, so I'm going to get straight into the news because I need some sleep tonight. Let me get this done and dusted, grab a bit of a feed, and I think I'll do a bit of editing on this week's video. I've got some photos to do on that, so I'm still going through the photos. Uh, so a little bit behind, but I think I should be able to catch up on the next couple of nights. Um, and then, yeah, it should be right for the weekend. But other than that, some news. Over the weekend, we had, well, over, the, over yesterday, since yesterday, not the weekend, it's not the weekend. It feels like a weekend because I'm back at work. I guess... Mon this is my Monday. I, th I think that's probably the best way to describe it. But have a week off, you get a Monday, yeah. But this is sort of our Monday for us, the working FICO. So we're a little bit per on the first day, and then we get into our groove. Now, Canon, over from Canon Rumors, three APS-C mount RF, APS-C censored RF mount cameras possible to come. Uh, yeah, very interesting little subject. Uh, an R7, which may come end of this year, they're saying, on Canon Rumors. Now, this is all CR1, so it's hopes and dreams at the moment. But generally, it's sort of with every bit of uh, falseness you get, there's some little tangible bit of truth in there. So it's very interesting to have the conversation about APS-C with Canon again. Now, the M. Mount range, the EFM, I had the M50, fantastic camera. Lens options were terrible. Uh, Canon definitely didn't support it in regards to lenses that could have done a lot more for zooms and high quality glass and a smaller package. They just really let it go. They weren't really, I don't think they're really interested in it. They just left it as a beginner's sort of thing. And it was up to Sigma to come along with the 16, the 35 and the 52. I think it was of those, they were the really good. The 16 was the best lens of the lot, and I used that with the M50, as you know, until we just recently sold it. Um, but yeah, great little system. APC for video is fantastic. Um, no problems with video, does it'll do 4K. Uh, if they put autofocus into it, dual pixel autofocus with all the stuff into that, uh, that will be fine. It'll, it'll be fine for video. It's the photography, oh, I definitely couldn't go back to that. Um, I'm definitely finding a lot more range, I guess, with the full frame uh, files that I'm getting. I'm definitely getting more. Um, maybe it's just a Canon thing from APS-C up to full frame. There's a big jump. Not sure if Olympus APS-C or the Fuji, that, that those files on the, on the APS-C format uh, as bad or not as, not as much depth in them. Um, 
to turn that down. Didn't mean to turn it off. So I'm not quite sure there, but look from my from what my experience as a video, it's fine. Photography a little bit eh, depending on what you want to do, I guess. If you're outdoors shooting birds and stuff like that, that's fine. If you're doing any sort of low light, APS-C is really really tricky to deal with. Uh, sunsets, sunrise, uh, night. Uh, definitely astro, you're going to find it tricky and hard to deal with, I believe. That's my personal opinion. I'm sure some other people out there will disagree. But that's the beauty of it. If we're all the same, life would be bloody boring. <laughs> Guarantee you that. And uh, I guess that's why we no one follows all the rules. Because if we all followed the rules, it would be just a bunch of robots walking around and it would really, really suck eggs to be alive. But anyway. So, these APS-Cs, rumours of a R7. Possibly later this year. That's this is the code names are given. An R8, which is deemed to be like a vlogger's style camera, uh, and an R9 to be the new entry point. Uh, no new RP to come, and they're not sure about what's going to replace the R or that. So the RP and R probably will disappear into the the abyss. Uh, we'll have the nine eight seven six five four three two one. I guess. I don't know what they're going to do for a 4. Maybe the 4 might be like a high megapixel version. It makes sense to keep your formats going. So you go from the 5 to a 4 being a high megapixel, then the 3, which was your, into your pro range, 2 into your pro high megapixels, and then 1 into your high sports, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's the way I would do it anyway. But what would I know? Um, but yeah, so that's pretty interesting to like have the conversation that Canon's thinking about bringing them back. And as I said before, they didn't really support the EF mount, and I think there's a lot of people who were disappointed with the lens options there. The M50, M6, the M62 was a great camera. M50 was a great camera. Um, I think it just lacks support from Canon. So it's strange that they're now going to bring something back in RF. Just, I guess, hopefully they don't just bring something out just to appease people that want APS-C, and then don't give them the lenses. Uh, currently there's no lenses, that's the other issue with that too. Um, we know there's a heap of lenses, 12 or so lenses or something more coming in that October show, September, October show. Um, are they going to bring out a range of APS-C lenses? It's no use bringing out a body if they don't have lenses. The EFM mounts won't adapt to RF, they'd have to change the sensor body, the sensor depth in the body apparently, Canon rumours are saying. So it's a little bit tricky in that regards. What are they going to do? Uh, being new bodies, third party systems are not going to be able to get lenses out straight away. So Canon's really going to have to come out with at least a Trinity, a wide, a mid range, and a long, a 70 to 200, a 24 to 70, and a, maybe a 16 or a 15 to 35, at bare minimum to start off, and maybe some primes as well. So they'd have to bring in at least four or five lenses if they're even going to release a camera in that style by the end of this year. So yeah, it's a little bit tricky to believe that one, but look, they are talking about it, so I thought it was an interesting little take. Now the R3, speaking of the R range, R3 has been spotted. Obviously we've seen the body. Uh, uh, Gordon Lang had the body, wasn't let to touch it, wasn't let to show us anything. It had the body there in England. Now they've had the G7 Summit, where all the world leaders that apparently don't have to follow COVID rules and they can travel wherever they want. They're the only people that don't have to do video conference to have a meeting because apparently you can only have a world leader summit in person. You can't do it over FaceTime, like Apple, Google, Samsung, the, the billion dollar and trillion dollar companies. Apparently they, they don't have to follow their rules. A little bit weird, I find that. But anyway, the G7 Summit, uh, the R3 was spotted there. And also, so we know it's out there, it's running, it's, it's working. It's going to be ready for the Olympics. It's going to be the Camry Olympics for the Canon range. Now, also some other rumors, not confirmed again. Uh, 30 megapixel around that. So maybe the 30 to 33 megapixel sort of range is what the R3 is going to be. So it's not going to be a high megapixel uh, bad boy or 45 or 50 megapixel. But around 30, I think that's going to be fairly good. It's the entrance point, I guess, to the pro range. And that's why I said you go up to your, your 9, down to your 5, and then you hit you into your pro, your 3, your 2, your 1. You go your R2 as your high megapixel, 60 megapixel sensor, the same body as the R3. 
and then your R1 has everything. That's where you get your SPAD sensor in the R1. That's my, that's my money on that. That's my dream anyway. That's my wish list. Um, so look, pretty cool. I think 30 megapixels, it's, it's gonna put a, a great image. It's gonna be a fantastic camera. It's gonna do really well for Canon at the moment. It's gonna help them out a lot against the fight against Sony because there's only really those two that are really putting out the high quality stuff in that pro level range. Nikon's been putting off and putting off and putting off theirs and still nothing as yet and the Olympics are next month. So yeah, it could be tricky for Nikon if they really need something, if they're gonna be having it in their pro hands. Maybe they've got it in their pro hands and they're gonna be ready for Olympics and they're gonna announce it after Olympics. And maybe they wanted to test it to the fullest to get it out to us. We don't know, but uh, look, it's pretty interesting. The R3, 30 megapixels, I think it'd be perfect. That's really a good setup for that. Now, uh, Windows 11, this is a pretty funny one to me because at work, where I work, billion dollar company, we only just went to Windows 10 about a year ago, year and a half max, after like Windows 97, I think we were, or XP. It might be an XP, no, Windows XP, we finally swapped to Windows 10 about a year and a half ago. Some people only swapped this year. <laughs> and already Windows, who said they were never gonna, Windows 10 was gonna be the last one. They've already canned it. It dies off on October the 14th in 2025. What the? <laughs> so anyway, next, this, uh, this, this month? No, June 24th, this month, uh, they're gonna be announcing Windows 11. The one they weren't going to announce ever is coming out next uh, next week. So crazy stuff. Windows 11. Um, some better things in it. Some screenshots that have been sort of leaked out and bits and pieces of it. It looks looks alright. I mean, I, to be honest with you, after using Apple for a fair amount of time and having to work every day on Windows, I love coming home and I hate going to work. Because Windows, especially Excel, I love Excel as a program, but it crashes like something ridiculous. It is insane how much that crashes. I've never seen a program crash as much as Excel. Terrible program. Um, so yeah, look, going to be that. Um, yeah, pretty interesting to see what they can come out with. We've just seen Monterey, the release of that and the announcement of that at Apple's event. Um, and what that's going to do, some smoothing, some colors. Uh, a lot more ease of use with that main page on the internet side of things. Um, obviously, Windows is a different beast. It's more of a uh, production beast and a business type beast. So it's not really into the internet and the fun stuff. It's more of into work, work, Excel, all those docs and words and stuff like that. So I'm sure it's going to be a little bit different. And I think it will probably be a better update and will hopefully fix a lot of the stuff that Windows 10's had dramas with. And I, I guess you can never say never when you're going to... Uh, make a software program. Pretty interesting. Now, uh, Knight Rider. If you're an 80s kid like I am, uh, look, we all know Knight Rider was out there and it's, uh, yeah, it could be coming back. Uh, the reboot is looking like it might be happening. Uh, James Wayne from Creative Saw, the Aussie director. Saw, Aquaman, Furious 7. Looks like he's taken it on board. He wants to have a crack at it and reboot it and give it a rebirth and I think that'd be pretty cool maybe a Tesla play they can self drive they took the flashing light at the front of it be pretty cool car I'm sure Elon would love to get that he would be like myself a big fan of Knight Rider it was a cult cult show for us as kids and uh, yeah I think that'd be a great matchup for Tesla it'd be very very cool fingers crossed on that one now Big fan of this one, Razer, the gaming guys and girls have released or announced a 130 watt GAN charger. Uh, it's got four ports, two four ports, two USB-C that will charge at 100 watts, the maximum. So if either you can have 100, so it's perfect for my MacBook 16, which I've been hanging something for that's smaller than that massive brick of a thing Apple's made, which is just terrible. Um, Two USB-C and two USB-A. The A's will do 18 watts up to 30 watts. So that's fantastic for the other, other issues. Only 35 grams, so it's gonna be easily half the weight, I reckon, of the Apple one, so that's awesome. Uh, dimensions 62 by 32 by 76, be smaller. Three plug types, doesn't have the AU one, which is a little bit disappointing, so hopefully they may bring it down the track. Uh, it's got the UK, EU, and the US plugs. 
although I can happily adapt it in, it's not going to move too far. It comes with a 2 meter USB C to USB C cord, and uh, it's compatible with the Razer Stealth 13 inch and the Razer Book and all MacBooks, which is great because, as I said, I think I've said a couple of times, the Apple charger from the 16 inch is ridiculously big and heavy. And now I'm traveling all the time, it's going to be great to get something a little bit smaller. So, yeah, super excited about that. That should be a good one. Very cool. And that's about it. A lot there. I uh, hope uh, you had a fantastic day. We're sort of basically started the working week for me. It's like a Monday, as I said, and uh, yeah, we'll keep on up and up and a little bit of rest tonight, and I'll be bouncing back. So, big things this week. Uh, so, stay tuned. Uh, we've got some lights to unbox review and also some headphones as well that have just sort of bounced out. So, super excited about that. Radio, I will see you all on the next show. Thanks for stopping by. We'll be coming this way, that way. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.